Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today for a second time we have Varun Dugilara on our podcast. We are going to be talking about happiness and mental fitness. Now this is the second episode. If you've missed the first episode, go listen to that because there is a continuation taking place. Enjoy. So mental fitness started taking place. Yeah. Then how did you get down this rabbit hole of happiness? Like what has that journey been? Um, and what are you learning? So so what it started off with. therapy to be very honest mm. um because one of the things i really wanted to work on is okay like i in many ways have the kind of life i always wanted right i wanted to be financially secure i wanted to be married to someone who was not just like a partner someone like pooja and i are literally like the clo- she's the closest person in my life in everything we share everything in terms of just like conversations we go super deep with some of these things and it's gone deeper through the pandemic and have a daughter is exactly the kind of dorky fun person who i would ever want as a child how nice And so we have all of this, but at some point there was. I'm like, I still have to work through some of my natural tendencies. I'm a person who is not good with any form of conflict. I will sweep something under the rug, but not talk about it. Now, not even go to the other person, not have no this thing. I will also have this outburst from time to time because I'm generally a very calm person hmm. in the worst situations. But I will have outbursts at rand at the most random things. So it started off in therapy where I was like, I want to understand why I behave like this. I want to understand. why my relationship with you know some people in my family is a certain way uh why do i behave a certain way uh with my daughter where i never thought i'll be the strict parent i am the strict parent but i'm also the silly one but i'm the i fluctuate in silly and strict and there in this topic of happiness came up a few times and i started reading up about it and weirdly enough and i know i'm not that old a lot of the stuff i started reading around happiness always focuses on people beyond a certain age mm. because often times in your 20s and your 30s happiness comes to you in spurts and you enjoy the the fleetingness of it but i feel as you get older you look at happiness almost like something you want to be more everlasting because you i i feel and i think i learned about this whole thing about the you have your fluid intelligence curve and your crystallized intelligence curve right uh, where when you're younger you are going through a fluid intelligence curve hmm. where you're really kind of driven by you know all the knowledge you kind of getting in and you getting all of that stuff at some point and that helps you go up your career ladder helps you progress in life but that is bound to dip like you will not be the young cool you know best performing person in your office for too long at some point you'll have that dip going going down and at that dip is when you shift from uh, what is your fluid intelligence to your crystallized intelligence which is basically wisdom right they say wisdom only comes when you're older because at some point you're jumping from okay i have a lot of knowledge now let me crystallize it into a few things which is why you are in many ways taking off the stuff you know you are letting go of a lot of the stuff you know focusing on a on a bunch of things and crystallizing that if you don't hop from one to the other quickly enough um you will not be happy because you're trying to find happiness in your career or all the stuff you would get satisfaction from in your 20s or early 30s hmm. versus when you get older what you value are relationships or the fact that you're giving back to the world you know you only hear all of this stuff when someone's little older right or like the fact that to have friendships and people who are closer to me who I can actually talk about stuff more than just like how my work day went and the more i started reading about this stuff a i feel like i call myself older than i am because i feel older but it just made sense it just like okay one second we got to look at happiness as something more than just um, i want to be happy all the time because you can't be happy all the time mm. and weirdly when you are happy you get that spike of dopamine or what whatever else you kind of getting your body will push you back your mind will push you back to almost bring you back to balance a set point and all, almost that reset point takes you in the opposite direction hmm. which is why when you have a really good like you have a high point in life you weirdly feel this downer right after hmm. because your mind's recalibrating you it bring you okay, come back to come back to the neutral position but you go off and you have to understand that so today i feel that downer i'm like once again i'm just kind of going back to it don't have to let it affect me which helps me also not re- react adversely because i feel what happens to me is i'll hold through the pressure of a lot of stuff happening not react to it till it builds up to a level where a small thing very random thing will trigger me and it will be a outburst that's a pressure pressure cooker kind of you're thing. holding the pressure in your mind yeah. versus if you feel and you find a way to release that pressure with every interaction you then don't necessarily have to have that outburst mm-hmm. but it requires you to be open about it you need to be open about okay this is what i'm feeling this is what you're saying you also don't have to sound like a th- therapist or a <laughs> this thing but and so often it end up talking like that right mm. i am told I, i i my friends keep telling me this like uh, when i go for a drink and stuff like 
don't make this a session i'm like i'm not a therapist dude but um, it's like don't make it a session but i feel it's that and happiness is also it can't just be about you it has to be about people around you it has to be about people you're connected to could be friends could be family could be community if it's only self it's never happiness because you all you, you will think that oh i'll buy something new i'll feel happy but if you realize when you, till you buy something you are happy after you bought it you're actually never happy mm. you always want the next thing the more yeah it's always the add to cart so i actually do this weird thing where i add stuff to cart never buy them then i move them to buy later <laughs> have, my satisfaction has happened i'm not even spend the money perfect like don't don't spend the money just do that and um, it's just those things i mean I'm, i can just go on but um, do you have a definition for happiness i don't yet hmm. i'm just trying to figure that one out i mean does I, your course have a definition for happiness the one that you're doing with harvard so the course is telling me that it's a balance of of four things hmm. it's still what i like about it is and this is by arthur brooks and arthur brooks has um, written a bunch of stuff on this he has a great book called strength to strength um, okay. which talks about this he doesn't define it as much as i mean there is a definition but i'm still not sure if that it's it's so simple that i'm like sometimes i wonder about it. it's basically it's almost a wants or uh, no it's let me, let me remember it properly it's expectations minus your it's an equation i'll have to look that one up but um wait i'm going to pick this one up is this the one which is that expected desire was expected outcome kind of thing no no i'll tell you i always forget this terrible memory in life ah uh, old na no that's why <laughs> clearly so old in my head i'm old my mother's also telling me you talk like this old person uh, now you know, now start brahmi you have to start almonds you know don't get me started on almonds that's <laughs> like one thing i've been like <laughs> acetyl mm. carnitine i can give you a whole list of stuff for your head So if I remember right, and I can't find it. Results minus expectations is happiness. Results minus expectations. Yeah. So if your expectations are more, and what you get is less, mm. that is the balance. So oftentimes we want so much more, mm. and what we end up getting will always be lesser than what we want. Correct. So you're never fully happy. If you want less, then happiness multiplies dramatically. Yeah. Because happiness is about being. It's. I think there's a lot more to being peaceful with happiness than it is to saying it's not joy. Mm. Joy is different. I think we also like misconstrue joy and as happiness. Happiness, joy, pleasure, mm. bliss, all of these are mixed up. Yeah, and happiness is is a nice calm state of like it's it's pleasant. Correct. Joy is like, like high energy outburst. Like oh my god, I got joy. Also, there's a book called Joyful, mm. which is a nice book because it tells you the things you can put around you in your environment to trigger. joy joy nice like just like having plants around or like what colors are uh, trigger most joy what elements can be so it's it's very like very practical usable practical physical yeah. space usage versus like okay in your head and all that stuff but have you read joy and demand no oh must read oh, so it is by this buddhist monk who used to work in google hmm. and he's using google systems to <laughs> help with meditation and enjoy very yeah. nice book on understanding joy from that point of but view but there's so much there right because if you think about this and we also say okay you can't and I, sometimes one of my favorite things to say is that we can't all a afford all the therapy all the business coaches everything else that we need in our life we can't also all like retire and go off live in the hills live on the beach and stuff we have to live still live in the in the real world so instead of going and looking for this big ticket moments to find joy uh, or happiness There's these tiny things you which give it to you all day long. We just don't notice them. Yeah. It's like that. I'm, I mean, the Western side will say the first bite of pizza. I'll say the first bite of biryani. <laughs> um, always, right? Like that. <laughs> that smell moment, of biryani only. So smell only of, biryani, right? Yeah. Um, or for me, it's like there are sometimes at night I'm sleeping and my daughter still sleeps on our bed because it became a thing which happened in pandemic and we just not. None of us. Have, we all have like separation anxiety with that now. But you're know, sleeping next to your daughter and sometimes in the night she kind of this tiny hand grips your finger. Aww. that is it right it's a tiny thing but it's it's so like it and it stays with you mm. and instead of moving past it you need to kind of stay with it and i suck at meditation so that hasn't helped mm. my mind is like a from a bombay context like dadar station most mm. times but but you I, know when your mind is like dadar station so one small mm. side mm. you need to be a hawker at dadar station yeah right you just need to watch it go past that's what i'm been learning to do mm. so i used to try and control it mm. and say i want to clear my mind clear my mind never happened so i feel in recent times i literally i also realized i don't maybe i don't do it the traditional way and i i realize it doesn't have to be traditional way like in the mornings that half an hour sometimes it's longer especially on weekends i just sit so we ha- thankfully have a small balcony i'll sit there with that lime water and i'm just looking out at the same thing i can look out every day 
but it's just nice just to 10 minutes of that you don't have to do an actual meditative practice although i do that before going to sleep i don't want to i i use the calm app and i do like a good 10 minute thing before going to bed and i sleep so well hmm. although sometimes um, if i listen to the jay shetty version on calm it gives me like more like more thoughts come in and i don't sleep properly because <laughs> he triggers so many thoughts um in my head but it's just that you need to find those small moments and you need to value them more and more the actually you know value is the wrong word you need to stay with them more i yeah. feel the stay is the problem is that we move quickly past the stuff which satisfies us because they're mundane and they're daily but it could be the coffee it could be like people talk about sitting and have making that cup of chai in the morning i understand that that is literally there it's that small point of happiness yes and uh, joy and we let that go that weirdly that insight didn't come from anything i read I have seen this movie called soul mm-hmm. so pixar movie called oh, soul oh yes yes of course yeah towards the end of it that main character the realization he has spoiler alert we're going to take a quick break see you on the other side welcome back all right let's jump into the conversation is this right and he looks around his environment and he sees that one pizza shop he sees that the tree with the leaf kind of coming off and i also understand why people say you should go spend more time in nature like every trip i've made i've tried to now make and especially the guy like no i want to go like i want to go shop i want to go now i'm like can we go to a park can we go like i've always been a beach person i can go to the beach but right. not like a hectic beach right a chill beach yeah hmm. and i was in therapy the other day and we traced this back so when i was a kid so where i grew up kakinada has a beach hmm. not a crowded beach i mean it's largely like there's a lot of industries and stuff near it so it was largely empty except on a sunday when families would come there and i used to take a the moped and or a cycle and go all the way to the beach and sit there by myself hmm. occasionally and i used to really enjoy that and i think back on that today that was me just finding that space which is why the sound of the ocean for me is like one of my biggest like in a good way trigger points to just kind of like feel calmer lovely because that's it's it's embedded in my mind from the time i'm a kid that you next to the ocean you just hear that kind of thing going up back and forth I think back on some of the trips I made when I was like I'd, I'd work for like 60 90 days on shoot schedules early in my channel we days and I would think just going and I would get onto a bus by myself and go to Goa hmm. not to party and stuff like that I would just be around the beach so in hindsight I was doing all these things I just hadn't put it down as a system nice uh, as okay whenever I'm feeling a certain way let me just kind of go and let me be next to the ocean sound if I can't I just play the ocean sound hmm. hence why lofi seems to work really well for me <laughs> um but you got to find those things you got to find those things that trigger these emotions in you and they kind of like help you kind of get perspective as well what are five of your favorite happiness habits or mental fitness habits that you have pausing is actually my favorite habit tell us about that so i would i would always use this term thing you know that irritating person who always pauses when they're talking and mm. be like can you just like stop pausing so much <laughs> i have a, so much like the respect for everybody who pauses a lot because that's when you actually allowing yourself to think right um often as you moving from and in today's world moving from one to the next one to the next one to the next you know taking a pause you're reflecting on the past you're focusing on where you are you're being present and you're projecting yourself towards the future you want to kind of get to if you don't do that you're always on that treadmill mm. but even when you are working out you're giving yourself those breaks there's a rest period it's, it's so important like 30 seconds 1 minute 90 second that gives you more clarity gives you more balance gives you all these things more than anything else your, your mental fitness for me revolves around the right pauses in between activity so the number one thing for me in being mentally fit is to really using pauses right a pause is not picking up your phone correct i am as guilty as most people were doing that all the time so pauses are one i feel movement is another hmm. when your body is moving you're naturally in a certain form of flow state and i have found this for myself that when i'm in a certain flow state when your body is in that your mind also kind of opens up to it so even if i'm doing like a really tricky thing in the gym which has like weights and i have to move a certain way there is a certain calmness to my mind and it brings about ideas and thoughts and stuff even though they might be moving away from this now hmm. um, so moving is so important just sitting will never give, give the ideas just i'm like brainstorms never worked i finally i'm right at least in my head <laughs> walking storms huh walking storms mm. or, or just like just move right um, movement is one of the most underrated pieces and we don't do it enough at all mm. they actually one of the best examples i heard um, again on a podcast i heard it um, 
there is a tribe called the Amara tribe. Mm. Um, I think they are North American. I'm not sure North American, South American, but but they are but they are the, the Americas for sure. They have this. They look at running as a spiritual practice, mm. um, and they run. I think it's the guys that hold the water in their mouth and run. This is a different type. I'm not sure. I'm mm. going to check mm. that one. And they walk. They run every morning with their arms wide towards the sun. Wow. And no earphones, obviously. None of those things, right? <laughs> and they say that is the most spiritual thing they can do because you are taking away all distractions. You're being one with your body. You're moving with your body. And that for them is how they want to begin their day. Nice. Now think about how we all move, right? You put in music. You listen to a podcast. You'll talk to someone on the phone no connection with the world around you just like switch off mm. in silence which we all kind of really like worry about mm. comes the most amount of clarity right and also the most amount of creativity which is actually my third one which is silences are things which i'm valuing more now to be mentally fit um doesn't mean you have to be this recluse but i just think that there is a sound to silence which kind of helps mm. and can't put it in any other way now especially I, Yeah, now especially, <laughs> and although the word stillness seems to give more value than silence, I still prefer the word silence um, because I think there's a there's a there's a certain vibe that comes with the word silence, which uh, which I feel also brings. I, again, it comes down to again, I keep going back balance and clarity, and it's that library feeling, right? It's just yeah, like, hmm. yeah, and you need because it also allows you to get bored, hmm. and being bored is a good thing. Hmm. I think being bored is a bad thing. Being bored is the best. Very thing. very good thing. Being bored is when you get the best brain waves, which is when your imagination kind of goes wild. Which is why I think back on many classes in college and school where I was the had the best ideas and thoughts because the class was so boring. <laughs> I used to do this weird thing though. So imagine my professor in diapers, uh, whenever I was bored. It's still a poop theme. So much fun! Imagine like the most boring lecture, right? Your professor is in diapers. <laughs> Suddenly the whole idea has transformed in your head, right? So. I would start with these, but and there's a fourth, there's a last one which I think is, it's a trickier one because it's not foolproof because it can go really sideways, um, which is talking to yourself. Hmm. And I feel oftentimes a lot of self-help moves talking to yourself to saying literally talking to yourself. Correct. It could just be writing something down. Hmm. Um, it could just be, it comes off the silence, comes off all of that stuff. You don't necessarily have to look in a mirror and saying. You are the best. Although that works for a lot of people. Yeah, I know a lot of people who do that every morning and they come out like fully charged. It's the best. Anil Kapoor Singh. Yeah, Anil Kapoor. I was watching an interview. I think this was Zoe Akhtar's movie, um, Dil Dhadak Ne Do. Mm-hmm. And um, I think uh, Ranveer Singh and Farhan Akhtar talking about how like Anil Kapoor literally would look in the mirror every morning and do his like chin up like this and saying, "You're fabulous," and he would walk out. Right? <laughs> It's like you can imagine an Anil Kapoor doing that. But that's why he comes out the way he does. Yes, right? absolutely. So you need to find your way to speak to yourself. Let me just put it that way. Um, because we don't talk to ourselves or treat ourselves the way we want other people to talk to us or treat us. Yeah. And that is where the biggest problem lies. Because you are judging yourself. You are telling. You tell yourself all the negative things. You're never telling yourself like, "Sabash, good job, mm. man. Like you're fine. Like it's or like one of my favorite things, right? I have like supreme spotlight effect all the time." Like everyone's looking at me, hmm. everyone's saying something about me throughout my life. Hmm. Now I'm a little better. Now I'm like, I call it like, it's fine. It's hmm. so why I dress a certain way. Sometimes I often overthink my dressing. Or like one second I want to wear this really like random thing, but maybe should I not? No, let's let's let that one be. So figure a way to talk to yourself the way you'd want people to talk to you. Hmm. Don't have and as long as you don't have that expectation from other people, your conversations with yourself itself satisfy you enough. That the stuff other people say to you don't bother you as much. Yeah. So I mean, off the top of my head, these are the ones I would pick. I mean, I could maybe think of more, but these Fantastic. are the ones for front and center. Last thing, mm. if you knew all of this stuff mm. when you were, you know, very actively building your business, mm. working at mm. that point of time, how would your life have been different? Um, I would make less excuses for the way I lived my life. Okay. So, for example. I wouldn't travel when I was building the business, even if it meant meeting family, like meeting non-work travel, non-work travel. Hmm. Forget holiday. Holiday was not even happening. Hmm. Even if like sisters in another city, another country, make a visit to meet her, hmm. not her having to visit me, and it's something which I have thought about a lot and spoken to her about in recent years, or something as simple as making the effort to go back home, meet grandparents, meet, you uh, know, meet mom, meet meet, meet dad, but not but. Because you always consider that a second part, mm. but if you want to make the time, you can. 
and the more you do these things the better you perform in the time you have at work i feel the excuse of i have work is an easy crutch when you can actually make the time mm. i don't think it's about what your um, career stage is like because uh, like even i break i, I talked some the other day about someone said okay you do so many things because you're in a business you have three podcasts you do youtube you're doing instagram reels you're doing wrote a book you did all this stuff how do you manage your time i said my day is literally broken into three chunks there is no scheduling i'm very bad at managing otherwise so there is the first part is the time you can't control mm. which is with work mm. because someone meeting it's a meeting it's a client it's someone else you can't control that all you can do is schedule it within that time so let's say from like 10:30 to 11 till 5 6 is that time so i'm not controlling that time at all mm. um that you is controlled by 5 you still doing all I still work till 5 6 yeah. and it's it's controlled by exterior party mm. then there is time with people closest to you so for me like that morning time and evening time is family friends mm. going meeting what i'm also expanding that to is friends now because it became only family mm. also two years of pandemic made me a bit of a recluse with friends and i'm changing that now so then those are those two, those two periods on the top and bottom of that but the earliest and the last things are time for myself mm. now as long as you look at your day like that some days will be off but that's all you have to manage but all those three are taken care of in a day correct and some days work will take over some days life will take over you won't feel it as much and these honestly you can do all you have to do is like me not watch as much netflix or not um, scroll instagram no, which i do too much <laughs> um i that my only guilty pleasures i feel are <laughs> instagram and youtube um but um yeah i think if, i would change that hmm. cuz i felt i always used i have work as an easy crutch correct and i don't think i needed to hmm. i could have done that part differently and i would also judge myself less like i've always been the person who judges myself way too much i've never had confidence still don't most times uh, on myself so I think I would do less of that as well. I'm like it's fine. Just try it out. What is the worst case scenario? You'll work beyond that. Is what I would do. Two primary things would be these. Fantastic. I love the way that you know these changes that you would have done in your past. Hmm. Eventually, that happiness that comes around is not about the work that you do or that not more, more, more. It's about all those other aspects of life. The family, the way you brought it in, the way yeah. that you're talking about. You know how you're going to take care of yourself. That me time is so critical in yeah. getting in this. Well, and thank you so much for coming on the Happy Coach podcast. This is such a fantastic episode. I love the way that we've just moved around all over the place, but we've got our mental fitness and our yeah. happiness in. Love it. Thanks. Thanks, Angu. Yeah, so it's just it's just lovely to talk about all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. we should have done this earlier. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, <laughs> I agree. So awesome. All right. Now, if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM Network. You can listen to us on the IBM Podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IBM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am at Ashton Doc on Twitter and Instagram. We have a brand new habit coaching online course, quizzes, videos, and a lot more on the website awesome180.com. So check it out now.